Nune one out. Okay, Welcome I back. To my uh, <laughs> go ahead. So, I'll get right to it. U L T Y. Yeah, U L T Y. Let's look at it. So, I think that this U L T Y fun is going to be a game changer for a couple reasons. One of the reasons is. And we know this from all of the other yield max funds, why this one's different, right? So this one, number one, it's focused on all different high, high IV companies, mm -hmm. right? We know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. What, and okay. So, so we know premium comes from high IV. Okay. Yep. Number two, what I like about it. And I, I listened to the interview with Jay and uh, what's his name? Max Convexity. Yeah. That guy. Jay gave, I think he gave a couple little nuggets, a little secret nuggets, where he said, basically, he's like, guys, we're looking to make this a consistent 120% yield per month if you listen to him yeah. he's he suggests it you know max is talking to him x y and z okay yeah. and then another reason why i like it it's very similar to fepi in the fact that unlike all the other yield max funds you can't change things out right so like right. tesla that we all own yeah you're stuck with it right yep but in ulti for instance, if Tesla or Tesla, I should say Tesla was in the Ulti fund, mm -hmm. Jay can Jay could take it out, yep. and then he puts in he puts in another uh, fund that's more high, you know, um, IV, mm -hmm. you know, and 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 if another one doesn't perform well, he can take that out, and then you can put another one in. Yep, I like I like that ability in this fund that. You can take out funds per prospectus. You can put new ones in because he's trying to create, and he said this, and this is what uh, myself and a couple of the other guys have been doing in terms of options is finding the stocks that are either on earnings or high IV, and we're doing options on those. Yep. And that's literally what Jay's doing with a lot of the same funds that we're doing it on. Yep. And then he can then he can change things out when he wants to. When an, when a stock's IV goes down, guess what? He can change it out, put a new one in, and boom. So he's changing things out. It's not he's not stuck with one thing. I think he's trying to go for over 100% yield on Ulti forever. Because guess what? All the funds that we love, they all have earnings. They all start to get volatile. Mm -hmm. He'll he'll throw them in, right? But all the meantime, Alti's profiting, going up. We're collecting the dividends, and it's just like a beautiful cycle. So I, so I'm I'm going to. I don't know what your um, uh, how much you have an Alti yet, Kamir, but I'm probably going to buy a, a, a you know maybe a thousand just to start. Thousand shares on Monday. We see where it goes, and we see really what Jay really wants to do with it. But I don't know. I, I'd like to hear everybody else's thoughts. That's my thought process. If I'm totally off, totally wrong, tell me. I'd love to hear it. Uh, but I think Alti the the ability to have uh, the power to basically in the perspectives take. Take funds out that you want to take out, and then you can put new ones in. I think that's really, really powerful for a prospectus, right? And super high volatility. So. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things. Uh, well, first of all, does anybody else have input? Otherwise, it's just me yapping. So. Oh, I agree. I'm 100. percent I agree that that uh, I love this. This that strategy sounds uh, like great, and like that there. This is like a fund that. 
high yield, but they're owning this. It's like a, a juiced up Feppy for for a fraction of the for twenty to twenty dollars, eighteen. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. It, All right. Yeah. So, so you get what I'm saying, though, right? Oh yeah, I think they 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 can. Yeah, they're really gonna. This is why it costs so. I mean, the, the, I mean, I don't really care so much about the expense ratio, but it's no. If you're gonna 100, percent who cares, right? Yeah, but it's worth. But you could see why because they're aggressively ma- managing this. You know, moving things in and out all the time, like you said. Yeah. And um, if that if I, I, I if you, if they're trying to go for that, like set 100, percent that's that's great. I love having the high aspiration to. So uh, if. If any of you guys watch any of my uh, portfolio review in the last, you know, month, no, just this month, just this the last two weeks, essentially. Uh, so if you if you watch in the last two weeks, uh, notice that I talk about my weekly pay. My first week is IWMY and QQY, and then my second week is Tesla, Connie, and and the the rest of the yield max. And my fourth week, you notice I've skipped my third week right now. My fourth week. I, I have Clip and Feppy and all those guys to to pay my fourth weeks. My third week, my core third week fund is ULTY. It was Y Max, it was Y Max because ULTY wasn't out yet. But ever since it came out, I bought 200 shares. Now, just the way how my portfolio work, I can only put, I, I only get six thousand, seven thousand dollars a month. I just reached seven thousand this month. But uh, it's not official yet. It, it, I mean, Charles Schwab show I have seven thousand, but I've done any official calculation into it, and so and then once I once once I confirm it, I'm going to make a video announcing that I finally reached my milestone of seven thousand. But either way, I'm getting only seven thousand, and I guess I can put all seven thousand in just ULTY, but uh, that's not really growing my portfolio. So. I'm essentially every month. Every month, I'm buying a hundred share. That's roughly about two thousand dollars. So a hundred. So in ULTY, and I only buy on the X date. So on the third week, I will buy it. That will be a hundred share. So right now, I have two hundred. So going to May, it will be three hundred share. Um, so, you know, the, the rest of the money, I'm gonna buy a hundred share in in uh, IWMY, and that will get to five hundred in May. You know, so. And that's how I that's how I just been growing my portfolio that way because I'm just buying uh, chunk. Uh, I haven't really, uh, you know, maybe maybe I, I'll take a look at just instead of buying uh, 400 shares IWMY, just take all 7,000 and put in ULTY. That means I can get roughly 300 shares, so that moved my ULTY to 500, you know, share for for the month of April. I. I don't know. I, I, I thought about playing both way, but I like to diversify and spread out a little bit uh, where where my money go to. All right. So why why do I believe in I uh, I uh, ulti so much? Just exact everything you said. I'm in violent agreement. So not uh, totally understand. I like the idea that they swap out. Uh, every, they just swap out. Not only they swap out. That's the first thing I like about that. Number two. Uh, they swap out for companies that have high IV because that's what we're going after. So that's I like that a lot too. And and number three, here's the here's a beautiful part. They don't they don't have to do synthetic cover call. They can just buy the share and do the cover call directly. Right. Which is exactly. more premium. Exactly. More premium. You so know, what happened is Jay Jay sort of changed the perspectives he saw. And he admitted it in in Max's interview. He's like, "Listen, we're learning, you know, what's good, what's bad, what people want, what people don't want." And so that's also good. This is like the fun that they they listened to 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 the investors, and then they also realized, "Hey, how can we make it better?" And so that's kind of what they're doing in the Alti one. Yeah. That's I think also why they're charging more, mm-hmm. right? But I, I, I mean, think about it. Let's say you had twenty uh, coin stocks. Mm-hmm. I mean, not not all twenty coins, but very volatile, right? Mm-hmm. And look at Coin, Nvidia, Square, all these ones that are that are just going up very high. Yeah. You can get that, and you can capture that growth. Yeah. Um, because of the volatility, yeah. and still get that yield. 
unlike what's happening with Tesla, yeah. right, and Tesla, which everyone's fitting on because it just happened. Something happened with Tesla. Volatility is down. Tesla's down. Yep. Everybody just wants to talk about Tesla. But what about Square, SQ? No one's talked about that. Yeah. What about pa- Papley? What about um, Mernie? Well, no, I, about, think, I think it's the byproduct you know? of, I think, you, you because you don't talk about it doesn't mean people don't like it. It's just, that's what the YouTuber people are talking about. So right, like, correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so why do YouTuber people talk about it? Because it was the first fun. Right. It's not like, if well, I start they're now. They're hating, they're hating on it, they're hating on it. Yeah, yeah. If I start, if I start right now, let's say, but I start my journey a year ago when it's only Tesla, you know what I mean? But if, if I start my journey now with twenty something fun, my Tesla holding is probably no no bigger than any other holding I have. Right? Probably, probably like probably maybe only forty shares. You know, let's say for example, like my AIYY is sixty share. That's probably my Tesla holding. Even though I like Tesla, but I don't love it enough to put three thousand share, you know, or eighty thousand dollars in it. Um, right. you know, right. I mean, it's not, it's not, but it was the only one, it was the only one for like, for almost three quarters of the year, you know? So, so I might as well just grow it, you know, and keep generating that, that 50% yield. But now I, I don't have to buy Tesla. So I can, I can, I can go buy IWMY, go buy Facebook. I can go buy, you know, a whole bunch of other funds out there that pay 80 cents to a dollar. You know, I can buy SQY or Connie, you know, that pay, you know, pay, pay well too. So, so there's, there's more options. So when you have more options, if I start now, yeah, Tesla holding be very small. I, I may, I may only get a hundred shares of Tesla. That's it. I have a hundred share of TSLP, a hundred share of Tesla. I'm happy. And I'm like, good. I love Tesla product. I love Tesla and I go own the Tesla product, but the rest of my money is going somewhere else. You know, it's splitting up across. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't start that way. You know, I came in when I came in. There was only three choices, and uh, so I'm by I'm I, I am a very bad example uh, of that. So don't. Uh, this is one of those cases. Learn from my mistakes, or learn from 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 the product of my time. You know, like I, I'm a product of my time. So learn learn it from me, and you don't have to uh, buy Tesla. Uh, you can buy anything else. Uh, and and you're good. You you're just equally good, or, or or even better. You know, depend what you buy. So um, does that make sense? Or yeah, it, it, hey, come here. Yeah, it does. I I, I see lines on. I, I I actually have a question for Lion. I don't know if he's available or not. Oh, yeah, lines here. Yeah, Lion. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, so hey, hey, Lion, it's Pay the Piper. I hear you. you. You say a lot of great stuff. I have a question. Do you think WiMAX and Ulti, what we're talking about, do you think that they have the capability to have sustainable NAV? with sustainable dividends based upon the new WiMAX strategy and the new Ulti strategy? Well, the WiMAX is basically the combination of all the funds all together. And uh, the fact that these provide diversification, it's uh, an advantage to that, in my opinion. Um, The... um, the fact that it's an equal weight, if I remember correctly, on the WiMAX is providing a situation if one is underperforming, the other one can offset each other. Um, and also one thing about it that what Jay mentioned, that uh, it only will be um, incorporate the new funds after one round of dividend payout. So that way, they allow them the time to um, to rebalance the fund in a way that it can uh, be equal weight with the other holdings. So 
if this is the fundamental of that fund, I believe this is more like a, a type of fund that provides a buffer for the IDMAX type of investment. And for the OT, this is the it's very aggressive fund uh, because they basically choose the one that with the most highest IVs of the holdings that apparently they see in the market. And they can change it uh, anytime they want, based on what it's stated in this pro prospectus. Um, whether they're gonna keep that the same, um, you know, range of uh, distribution rate, the time will tell. I, I, have no, I have no idea. What I can tell you that the ulti is much more aggressive with the way they, uh, planning to manage that fund versus the YMAX. That's my opinion. So anybody else can ch chime in and thinks uh, differently, that's fine too. Well, well, here's something, here's a question for both of you. Um, have, have you thought of that, if you paying a dollar anytime an ETF a twenty dollar price, paying a dollar. Uh, eventually, it's going to go into the same situation as Tesla, Q, 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 Y, all of them go through, because what happened is the price is going to keep coming, uh, keep coming down, and you keep you, if you're trying to maintain a hundred and twenty five percent yield like you were talking about, well, definitely this thing is coming down. Uh, uh, so. What what will happen? What would you would you be would you care if this thing go into reverse split a year from now? Uh, I jump in on that uh, that question. I well, it's all about uh, position sizing in your portfolio, mm -hmm. um, and you're right. There is there is a risk because if they pay higher distribution and this is coming out of the NAV, you may end up with a situation where the price depreciation of the, the, the fund will not have enough time to recover mm -hmm. uh, they, after paying the dividend. Yeah. However... I mean, they pay what, the dividends, and then not only that, they, re, they reshuffle the the asset so it doesn't it, it will not have enough time by the nature exactly of that's the second part of it yeah. yes that i was about to say because they have the option to reshuffle to different assets yeah. which has ivs they may be able to may uh, collect higher premium income with the newer asset once they do the reshuffle mm -hmm. and one of the things I'm not clear about, and perhaps somebody can chime in, whether they are planning to pay the full distribution every dividend payout, or they are keeping some of it, and then pay a certain amount in order to keep certain threshold of distribution rate, let's say 120% for OLT, for example, and keeping the remaining premium in the fund. That's that's the something I, I'm not sure about Ulti. But it's definitely a risk that if we may end up with a reverse split on Ulti, if we're going to end up with highest distribution frequently, which the fund will not be able to recover its NAV, because at the end of the day, the distribution is coming out of the NAV. Yeah. They saw the extrinsic value of the premium income coming out of it. So if the fund manager will be able to put something back in, keep the NAV uh, a certain level and pay out the remaining, perhaps he can protect that scenario that to explain. Pay the piper? What, what, you, got, you got any... Uh, uh Opinion on what we just said, or are we right? Did we lose him? 
I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what's oh, so I pay the piper. Oh, I don't know if yeah, he's, on... he's still he's still on the screen, but I don't know what happened to him. Yeah, Bill Betts, or what's your take on it? I just my take is the individual stocks. Yes, I think Ulti and Y Max. We don't have nothing to worry about with reverse splits. Yeah, uh, it's. I mean, it's just it's just we we seen it, and it. Um, anytime you pay more than a dollar, and you don't give enough time to recover, like Coney is a good example that it recover. It will pay you pay two dollar. NVD is a good example. You can pay two dollar, three dollar, didn't matter, because this thing is recovering and back up. But when you don't have a mechanism to recover, that sorry fast, guys, I'm, I apologize. I was on a call. Sorry, oh, okay. sorry, sorry. Okay. Come here. I see, like uh, Ulti and what was the, the question? YMAC, they have there's multiple there's multiple companies in there. They're not all going to go down. Like say, yeah. Nvidia might tank. You know, mm -hmm. so after the dividend plus the stock went down, it makes it so hard. But in these others, if they have like ten, all ten are going down. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think you're good with Ulti and Wimax because hey, of that. Piper, do you heard what I said or before you pick up the phone or you? No, no, no. Tell me, tell me. I'm sorry, come here. Tell me what you said. Yeah. So, so Lion brought a point, and then I add another point to it. I said there's, there's two things. Number one. If you consider this because it's paying a high yield of 120 percent, like you said, and that's that's essentially over a dollar, and at that rate, you have to be prepared that Ulti may go face uh, same situation Tesla where you have to reverse split because it's going to come down. It's going to come down hard. Be that's that's number one. Number two is that it's because it rotate so fast it doesn't recover it doesn't have it doesn't give enough time for the the underlining fund to recover it's it's uh it's essentially um you know uh you know the, the, it's nav again so yeah at the end of the day it's a double whammy and it's coming down and we you see i'm talking what's about? The, so what's the, yeah yeah so what's the question the question is i i are you do you calculate do you considered i know you, you 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 talk about you start off the uh, you know 30 20 minutes ago you start off and said you know ulti might be the next thing which which i when we all agree i think we all loving it but the, the other factor is are you prepared that ulti may may bring the nav down to the point that's going to do reverse split so so that's a so that's a great question mm -hmm. uh lions a smart Smart dude, we all know that he knows he knows what he's doing. Um, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of I th I think when you get that many high yield companies in one fund and they're high yield for a reason, mm -hmm. and then when they start to shoot up or go up they're going to replicate what yield max is already doing with all the rest of the funds, right? NVIDIA, NVDY, Nefli or, or, um, PayPal or square, right? Are, are you talking about we, yield or are you talking about the IV? So I'm talking, so I'm talking about the IV because okay, IV, yeah. that, That's that will create, that will create the ability for the fund mm to go up, yep. right? If you had 10, 10, diff 10 different companies that acted like Coney, Coin, this one would be Scott to the sky, right? That's what they're trying to replicate. Yep. And so if they're doing super high yield or super high IV, and if they let it go with the strikes, Every every time there's a dividend, it's not going to matter because they're all going to they're all going to be like Coney's or Nvidia's or yeah. Squeeze or well, let me ask know, this about IV all I, of those I, I don't all, and then and then ones that we don't even we don't even know about because they're not even actually in the yield max 
family, yeah. but they're still super crazy. Like the uh, there's some uh, like, like um, caravan. They have oh, ca- ca- Carvana. Yeah, <laughs> car- Carvana, and uh, some okay. some other ones in there, right? Uh, the yeah. the cryptos and and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So so I they guess that's micro, my um, Wayfair. They have Nano X Micro Strategy. Of course, they have my, uh They have Marathon. They have a lot of crypto stuff. And Mara, have, Mara, yeah. Yeah. And Mara. They have Roots. So, so, GameStop. so my my so my stance or my philosophy or whatever you want to call it is, if they can acquire these companies, and Jay said it on the interview, he says, "Hey, listen, if we know Nvidia is going to be having." Uh, uh, an earnings a month before mm-hmm. we're going to put them in there. That's powerful because you can, you're, ch- you're literally now changing the entire process or the entire thing of, 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 of Ulti. You're I, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, Think totally about me. that. Yeah. You, you don't have NVIDIA in it, but then you can just put NVIDIA in it. Yep. How, how powerful is that? And then you can do that with anything else. Yeah. I just think that the, the the way that you can change it per the prospectus and their plan, I think that could be sustainable. I could be a million percent wrong. I lo- I love uh, to hear what people have to say. I'm I'm literally nobody. I I, I don't know anything. I, I'm just literally just. I'm almost come here. Me and you are the same. I, I'm on my journey. If I go bankrupt, I go bankrupt. But I think this is, um, I think this one's a game changer for for those reasons. And I, I, I really want somebody to say, "Hey, Lance, I'm sorry. Pay the piper. You're wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Tell me why I'm wrong. I'd like to hear it. Let's discuss it." Lion's a super smart dude. I've heard listen to him for many many months um i don't mean listen i don't i i, I want to be wrong sometimes i agree i agree everything you said this could be a sleeping giant at 18 dollars. yes right now yes yes yep yeah one point to add um to this comment is that the fact that uh, they have the flexibility to choose the one with the highest IVs and the fact that they can play around the, how further they're going to be out of the money. Yep. They can play it uh, safer. Let's say that you have high IV that's uh, increasing higher than 80, 90% on one holding. And they can say, okay, we got about 10 holdings and all most of them it's around 80 to 120 percent ivs all right they they have the flexibility to play a short-term trade on each and every one of those on different uh further away of the out of the money on each. That means they can say they can do, let's say, 15 delta, or they can do 20 delta, or they can do different um, uh, different strikes on them based on the uh, in based on the IV, based on the volume, based on other criteria that they have in their platform to track it. And because Please it's actively, and because they are very actively traded. And because they have the way to reshuffle these holdings any day, any day, they can change. They can either add contracts or they can buy the clothes or can do other tactics to change the strike price or expiration for each. That gives them, and they choose what is the holdings going to be. They are not tied. The hands are not tied to simply the prospectus that say they have to hold this and that companies. They can go and pick, they can cherry pick those, the ones that they can prove the highest juice. And what they can do, they, they can decide to play it safe 
by rolling some of those buy to close in order to secure some of the premium income in order to secure, let's say, 120% on each before it's uh, trending the other way around. So, but this needs to be very well managed, actively managed all the time in order to find those. But they have to be careful with, with whipsaw because whipsaw can hit them back. That's kind of the tactics of what I am envision that's going to happen in that case. So the risk, the risk is there. They can hit on those good trades, but they can go wrong with the others. What we want to see is more winnings than losing trades. The more they have probability to find the winners, the higher uh, they will be able to protect the NAV. The second question where you were on the call I brought up is whether the fund manager will decide to keep some of those premium income in the NAV and pay the remaining ones to the shareholders. So that way it can protect the NAV because it can gain a lot of juice. It can keep some of those in the NAV and pay the remaining, by, but, but still keeping the distribution rate high. I've never heard if they're going to do that. I didn't see anything in the prospectus saying that they are maintaining that type of strategy. I'm wondering if you know about that. This is an interesting subject, man. I'm just no, enjoying it. Lion, Lion, listen. What you're, what you're saying is 100% true. You're 100% on point. I um I always appreciate your comments. And um thank you. You 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 know, you know what you know what you're talking about, okay? Um and like so for instance, come here, you're asking like clean clean spark carvana uh, Astria Therapeutics, right? I'm on the website. Um, I think it it could be a wild, it could be totally wild with this fund. Um, I just, I think Jay, I think Jay went back to the drawing board after he did a bunch of the yield maxes and said. Wait a second, why did I hand tie myself so that I couldn't change things out? So I have to follow the prospectus, right? So let me create a fund that I'm not hand tied and I can just go wild and crazy on with the high IV and literally get like 120% a month. And I change them out, in and out, like Lion said, hundred percent. It's that's why I think this fun and, and and Fepi are so powerful because they they could change things out as they please. You know, their hands are not tied. So, Lion, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, he's got GameStop, Robinhood, Carvana, Coin. Clean Spark. It's gonna it's gonna be a three dollar distribution this month for a fact. That'd be great. I love that. Yeah, that that may be a short term trade that they're gonna do on those because this is the highest volatile type of trading uh, vehicles in the market today. You know, that's some of them. Info. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, but that's why we're here, though, right? But that's also why he's he's charging one point two nine percent. Yeah, you know, because this is a very actively traded type of uh, fund. They have to do a lot of trading. There's going to be also expenses on top. And uh, think about that: if they need to roll, if they need to buy close, if they need to short short selling yes yeah. yes i i want that don't you guys want that 
I want them selling in and out. I want them doing that so that they can get the best IV companies in this fund, right? UTLY. I want them doing that. I'll, I'll pay you a one and a half percent a, if you're yeah, giving me 150 percent. 1.24 is what it shows, but that's, yeah, we'll pay it. Right. Like, Somebody say something. Am I? I don't listen. I'm not right or wrong. Does anybody agree? Disagree? Come here. I'm. I'm. I'm just enjoying this conversation. Uh, this is sometimes I don't need to talk. I mean, I'm just enjoying because you, <laughs> you, you and I, you and I on the same page. So yeah. it's not like it's not like we win difference. You know. No. So so I so I guess why I say that is because. I, so we're, uh, I guess, Lion and I are talking, but to a certain extent, I guess, Kamir, I get what you say. We're like, does anybody agree? Does anybody disagree? Tell me that I'm crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I think uh, both of us are on the same page. Um, on When you say the same about uh, choosing the ones that they have high volatility, implied volatility, that they can play around in short term, being able to uh, collect the high premium income from this option trading from those that they have more juice and more volume. Now, think about for a second another scenario. Uh, I think there was one of the interviews you mentioned that, that usually IVs is trading higher during earnings season or during a market news that moves mar market, like like PCE, for example, or like CPI or job report every Friday of the first Friday of the month. Usually then the market kind of ecstatic about that and the IVs on the a lot of stocks is higher. Well, they can play around this window. They can choose and pick the ones with the high IVs just to squeeze those high income, premium income from those and immediately sell those the day after. You see what I'm saying? Because let's say no. Like and that, and hold on, that's exactly that's what that's exactly what I'm saying. How powerful this fund can be, right, Lion? Yeah. So the question is, uh, how many? W I mean, that's going to be an interesting over time. We will learn about correct, how this correct. fund will behave what's the uh the dna of these funds gonna be in terms of paying us the distribution rate that's gonna be hopefully sustainable if they hit the market let's say they want to pay us 120 percent well if that's going to be sustainable or not that's a question we will have to see but based on what they are saying that they're going to employ what the tactics they're going going to employ for these funds they do have the flexibility to play around either the timing of the either during windows of earnings or or big market news where the IV is highest at that time or the VIX is high. Uh, and we learned from uh, exactly. also from the last interview with uh, uh, Convexity. You know when he talked about the VIX, which is the volatility of the option. Fix, which is another thing that I learned from that call. Interesting enough that Jay is also looking at it as well. So they have different ways and methods that they can employ in Ulti, which they don't have with other Edmax funds. That's and the reason they, they charge higher uh, expense ratio on this one. That's the reason they have the option which option, no pun, pun intended, to basically change or reshuffle and and remove uh, other underperforming, uh, I uh, you know, holding that they don't uh, produce enough premium income at certain point. Let's say after the earning, when it comes down with the IVs, they already squeeze enough from it. They can choose something else instead, which provide better. Premium. No. And, and and listen, hold on. If it goes down, 
if it's yeah. starting to go down, mm -hmm. they take they can take things out and readjust. Right, Lion? Well, yeah. Uh, the, the 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 real question is how they're gonna pay from uh, out of the NAV because once it's it's paid. Well, because if the higher distribution rate, we're going to see a, a price reduction at the X date. And then it depends on the timing and the selection of funds that they're going to continue to play the same game in order to regain that. Otherwise, we're going to go with re rinse and repeat in terms of reverse split. Now, what are you going to do? Are you going to reinvest during the X date on OT in order to maintain the NAV, in order to keep this fund at certain uh, position size in your portfolio? I think the answer that no. uh, Sega saying, well, it, it's like they, they say for all the other funds, it's better to reinvest some. And I'm wondering if you have to do the same what Convexity was saying, which is two-thirds of the funds that you have to reinvest in order to maintain the NAV. I don't know if you heard the last interesting interview that he had with uh, Jay. He provided insight about that. So I'm wondering if you have to reinvest oh. Third of your distribution in order to maintain that for these particular funds, like he suggested really? to the other Edmax. So I don't, I don't agree with that. Okay. So what you're saying? I mean, on that? Hold on, you hold on. No, I mean, yeah. in in general, you're right. But like, so for instance, what if I had a million dollars in NVDY? Would I have would I have to reinvest anything? No, you don't. And the reason because in the underlying performing right. in a bullish consecutive cycle, always kind of going up. Right. So you so 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 my overall concept is is based upon a market. You don't always have to reinvest, as people are saying. Number one. Number two. If you're in a cycle where, hey, I've got N NVDY, I bought it for 20 bucks, and it's at 30 bucks right now, let's just say, right? Well, which is actually true, and it's paying me dividends, why would I have to reinvest that? It's, I'm, I've earned the capital already, and it's paying me 60% yield. Why, why would I have to reinvest that if I was in an in NVDY? Uh, because they may be wrong with some of these holdings that may have may have to pay more than what they gain. Look, uh, market can go against you in a very hold high on. I get market. it. I get it. But we're not talking about that yet. I totally understand when the market goes against us, then your strategy has to change. But if it's not, can can we agree? Like, hey, maybe. We're going to obviously save something for when the market does change, but we don't always have to invest everything, right? Yeah. So here's he here, my, yeah, my, 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 my plan, my, my whole, my plan strategy line. And I'd like to hear what you have to say because I know you know what you're talking about. I'm a third, a third, a third. Okay. Third, going to taxes, a third is going to reinvest and a third is me lion and come going to get drinks on the beach right i'm going to use that third to go celebrate i'm going to do a third for taxes and then i'm going to do a third to reinvest that's my strategy overall Yeah, so so you do reinvest some of it, yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that, that's that's my point. That that's exactly my point. Um, I, I'm not saying what I'm saying based on the SIBO uh, that Convexity provided and shared with the community, which is a very valuable study. 
he provided a very uh, good insight about the uh, benchmark of this type of strategies on uh, cover call strategies where you have to reinvest in order to maintain NAV, uh, they said two thirds. But if you do third, that's fine. I'm doing 50% usually. That's kind of my call. Uh, in just to maintain the NAV and continue collecting dividends where basically every month it's going to be higher. Now, on, if we go back to the, that's kind of a general comment, but if we look, if we go back to Ulti in that case, this is going to be very interesting trade because they have to make a decision every day, every single day, whether or not they're going to change the strategy on each and every all underline. Let's say that you have a game stock. This is a meme stock. This is a crazy, crazy one. And we know that, right? And you have a play of uh, Wall Street bets, uh, working with GME and working, you know, that's uh, GameStop stuff. And this can be play all over the place. Will they manage to yield premium income on this one without getting hurt? I don't know. I'm asking a question. I don't know. They may or they may not. And that's the point I'm trying to make. They have to be very picky in, the, in the, what we, they will select in this fund. That's number one. They have to be picky what the strike price is going to be and how far out of the money it's going to be and what's the expiration they're going to keep and which one is going to be short sell or put or if they're going to have a other uh, buy call maybe because it's uh, trending up and they want again upside on that. If they're able to pick those NVIDIA, a Misty, Tony, all the good ones that's, you know, that they're well performing, then great. You're going to gain easily upward movement, but it's not necessarily going to be always the case because they have to find the ones that really just not only provide good IVs in order to squeeze more income, they have to go also sideways and up gradually in order to perfect their selection. You follow me? Yes, 100%. So time will tell. I mean, I don't see... I, I, the I good thing about this one is the advantage that it provides us to have another vehicle in our portfolio, in our toolbox. It's another tool, and it's a very strong one. It's a booster. And that's the reason I have a position with Ulti, to be able to bring more yield to my portfolio. But each and every investor needs to decide what the risk portfolio should be on this one. That's my point. No, your so. point. Your point's well taken. You're you're definitely way smarter than me. So, no, you're good, man. Uh, I mean, you, you're putting a very good comments and uh, insight. I, I great appreciate your insight. It's it's uh, providing a lot of, you know, things to digest and think about and. Greatly appreciate that, man. Well, like, listen, likewise, Lion. I appreciate you too. And awesome. Let's let's see what happens. So, yeah. Hey, and why, Max? If we go back to the other fund, because we started the discussion about Ulti and why, Max? Why, Max is 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 less crazy, I would say, quote unquote. <laughs> than all the other ones because it's provide a little bit more sanity, quote unquote, of course, to the to this type of vehicle because it has diversification of these holdings and it's equal weight and it's gonna be rebalanced based on the introduction of new funds coming in. And the good thing about it that it gives time in order to generate the income from 
the new underline coming in before it put it in Ymax. So that way it can decide what's the distribution gonna be for that fund. It gives also flexibility from that point of view to the fund manager. That's what I'm thinking. If this is where me, I was kind of looking at that and see, okay, this is equal weight, right? I want to see how much it's going to pay and then decide where I'm hitting. What is the yield distribution rate I'm hitting with Winemax in order to maintain it at reasonable rate? So everybody will be happy with it. My, my, my million dollar question on WiMAX is, Lion, do you think that WiMAX can sustain the NAV and still pay what it's paying over the next, you know, couple years based upon the function of the, of the fund and, you know, everything that it's got going on, like, did they create something that's sustainable, essentially? Yeah, if you look at all the Edmax family, look at all the holdings, there's only few that underperform in the others. Remember the table that uh, Edmax uh, published with the total rate of returns on each and one of those? That was for the past year. There was a table that posted there, and you can look at it, and you see there's only few of those that they were underperforming. Tesla is one of those, right? Because we know that Tesla was under uh, decline over the few months. Um, but if you look at others, we know for sure that they were overperforming. So if they all be in the same basket, like WiMAX, they can offset they can offset the underperforming ones. And when they offset the underperforming ones, they are will able to can maintain a, sustain, a sustainable distribution rate. Likely, you know, the probability is higher in that, in that case. The probability is higher. It doesn't mean that they can would be, you know, one month they can pay lower, but it means the probability for getting a sustainable distribution rate is higher with WiMAX because it's uh, holding a basket in equal weight. And if there is something underperforming, the one that is overperforming can offset the other. That way they can maintain a certain balance with the distribution rate. I agree. Yeah. Make sense? Yep. Yep. Any, yeah, no, it makes sense I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for taking up everybody's time here, man. I yeah, apologize. I'm sorry too. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of uh, going no, back this, and forth. This, dude, this has been <laughs> great, man. I'm just sitting here just enjoying and just milking uh, the conversation. Uh, I, I Sometimes, like I said, there's, I mean... I, I don't really have anything to add on to this thing because you guys say, say everything that I I already believe in it. You know that's why that's why it's my third week. That's why it's my big third week fun. It, it's gonna be my biggest holding. You know. Yeah, and that's why I parked uh, the Y Max in my IRA, and it's up eight percent plus paying fifty seven cents dividend. So I'm just leaving it over there. Lion, hey Lion, you know your stuff, man. You you know your stuff, bud. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you too. Come here. Sorry, let me take up your channel. <laughs> no, no, that, that's 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 the channel. It's the, the discussion. But uh, okay, well, hey, thank you guys. Um, uh, I well, I want to double check. You know, I I record this from the beginning when we when we start the conversation. Are you good with me uploading this? Conversation. I didn't. I didn't know I was being oh, recorded. Yes. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right. Well, in yeah, case you did not know, every time that I every time that I talk, I, well, I, I I apologize if you didn't catch it, 
when I first made the statement and said, hey, it's recorded. And, uh, oh, you must no have. Worries, no worries. Right. No worries. It's good conversation, man. That